that's 50 million copies across the whole franchise so is that only mainline games or is that also including like alpha games oh also guys um you might have seen it already um so in case you didn't know in 2020 there was a capcom cross tezuka art exhibit it wasn't a game disappointingly it was an art exhibit which is still pretty cool even though it made me want it to turn into a game uh and you had capcom artists drawing tezuka characters and people from the tezuka foundation drew capcom characters and there was an art book there was a poster there were some t-shirts it was some kind of art exhibit that lasted a certain amount of days in japan and uh some of the stuff was being sold on eBay. I saw some of the art books being sold on eBay, but I couldn't find any of the shirts or the posters, unfortunately. But what's crazy is that they're doing another one. The second Dream Collaboration, Capcom vs. Osamu Tezuka characters, which was held in 2020, will be held again in uh, Takarazuka. I don't know where that is. With a new... Uh, let me get it on screen for you guys. With a new theme. Okay, so what's the theme, right? With a new theme, hashtag Street Fighter 6. Huh? So... You're telling me that it's Tezuka cross Capcom, but all the Street Fighter stuff is specifically Street Fighter 6 themed? Because look at this. So you have Luke, Street Fighter 6, Bearded Ryu, Jamie... Marissa back here? That's crazy. So not only was Tezuka Cross Capcom such a big deal for me personally when it happened. Well, it's a big deal in general, right? But, you know, it's mostly a big deal in Japan because Tezuka is huge in Japan. I don't know how much of a, uh, a presence Tezuka really has outside of Japan. But Te Tezuka Cross Capcom was crazy to me when it first happened. And it's even crazier now because not only is it getting a second one, but it's specifically sort of a promotional thing for Street Fighter VI because they're specifically showing Street Fighter VI characters and Street Fighter VI Ryu. And uh, it makes me think maybe it is going to be a game, right? Street Fighter VI is firing on all cylinders. The fighting game division's warmed up. Maybe it's hidden in plain sight what their next fighting game is going to be. Te Tezuka Cross Capcom fighting game would be literally a dream game of mine. I would play it so much. I don't care if it was a poverty game with only like two people playing it. So long as there was another person to fight in that game, I would be playing it. Uh, and it's really interesting seeing the parallels here. So Blackjack and Phoenix Wright, they were sort of counterparts in the first collaboration. That made sense, right? Because you have a doctor and a lawyer. So, what's weird, though, is that uh, Astro Boy, his counterpart was Mega Man, right? That one's pretty obvious, because Capcom originally wanted to make an Astro Boy game. They couldn't get the rights, so they made Mega Man. So, there's a bit of history there. But what's crazy is that it's actually Edward Falcon. I don't know if you guys can see it very well there. It's actually Edward Falcon right there from Power Stone, paralleling Astro Boy. And you might think that's insignificant, but if you recall, in that Capcom ransomware leak... It mentioned a Power Stone port, or a remaster, or something like that. I think it was a collection of Power Stone games. I think the final fight... I might have to go back and check the ransomware leak, but I think the final fight thing said Final Fight Remaster or Remake, and Power Stone was a collection, okay? So, my point is that... You know they're probably only including Edward Falcon in here... Because they kind of want to increase its brand recognition at least a little bit. Because they know they're about to release a retail game with Edward Falcon on the box, right? And so... That makes me think, if they're really using this thing as sort of a promotional thing to increase brand awareness before a game gets released... This could be serving to kind of drum up hype for a game, right? I know that's kind of a conspiracy theory... Uh, also, uh, Gene is on here, and Hayato. So Gene from Cyberbots, Gene Sautome right there. And that's Hayato from Star Gladiator. When was the last time Capcom... Oh, also, this is a uh, Rival Schools character. When was the last time these franchises ever got official art in anything? 
So this has me super excited. Oh yeah, also I forgot to mention Street Fighter 6 Chun-Li right there by Princess Knight. Also, that's a new design for Pluto. Which looks really cool. Because, uh... For any of those that don't know, Pluto, or uh, Bruton, was actually created in the Middle East by this Sultan. But you never really could tell just from looking at Pluto. Because it was such a simple, like, sleek black design with the horns. I think the whole, I think the whole idea of the, of the design was to kind of base it on, like, Moloch because of the black horns, right? Uh, but this design of Pluto, I think, is amazing because with the uh, designs on the face and the patterns uh, around the horn where it's connecting to the head, it actually kind of looks uh, Middle Eastern somewhat in terms of the design motifs. And so it actually looks like something that was made by some sultan, right? And so I have to think... Why would they redesign Pluto with a new original design? Just for an art exhibit, right? <sighs> maybe maybe uh, Tezuka Cross Capcom could have giant characters like uh, Tatsunoko versus Capcom. Have Pluto and then some giant from Capcom. This is kind of me just on copium right now, but I just wanted to point this out because I didn't see many people talking about it. And I love Tezuka and I love Capcom, so this is uh, such a big deal to me. Oh, also, <laughs> I just wanted to point out. I think it's so funny that Unico, instead of being on the Tezuka side, somehow Unico snuck over to hang out with Lilith. Lilith is holding Unico right there. Okay, so while we are looking at Capcom collaboration art, I should also show off this other thing that got posted recently, which is this. This is official, and it says a collaboration illustration with the Japanese men's and women's volleyball team, which we support as a top partner, has been completed. So apparently Capcom is some kind of sponsor for some volleyball thing. Who actually knew about that? <laughs> but we got this art out of it. So we have Luke playing volleyball in a volleyball jersey, but he's still wearing his MMA gloves. And uh, Rockman EXE somehow put on a shirt, despite his chest symbol still being on the outside. I actually asked Discord about it, and uh, someone in the Discord actually explained that in one of the seasons that never got localized, there was actually a program chip that lets them put on clothes, and Roll gets a wedding dress that way. So let's assume that's how he put on the shirt. Uh, and then Chun-Li is probably the one that makes the most sense here. She still has her, has her, uh, bangles, though. Uh, and then we have a Palico who, I guess, forgot to put on his uniform. Well, no, he's wearing a little bit of the team colors right there. Uh, Leon is a referee, I'm thinking, right? And at first, I was wondering, why is Rathalos here? But then I realized, oh, the volleyball's on fire. So I think Rathalos role, Rathalos' role on this team is to imbue the volleyball with fire, so that way Luke can spike a flaming volleyball into the opponent team. And this is official. Once again, I'm reminding you, this is official art. <laughs> and so I feel like we've been getting some crazy official Capcom art lately between this and the new Tezuka Cross Capcom collaboration. So I'm kind of getting spoiled. Mega Man looks so weird. I feel like, okay, here's my headcanon for this team. Um, Luke and Chun-Li are the only two normal humans on this team, right? Luke is a ref. So you have uh, a giant monster, right? A wyvern that's just roaring. You have a literal cat and you have a computer program that somehow materialized itself into the real world. Luke and Chun-Li are the only two normal humans on this team. So they're kind of like the babysitters. They're the mom and dad. They're the mom and dad. Rockman's their son. And the Palico and the Rathalos are the pets. So that's my headcanon dynamic for this team. <laughs> because, like... The only people that can talk to each other are these three. And Rock Band's like half their height, so they're just going to see him as like a kid, even though he's not necessarily a kid. Because I like to think that at this point, 
you know, Rock Band's a computer program. If you think, okay, he was born in 2003, you know, he's, you know, old enough to technically be an adult now. He's 20 years old. Right? He's a 20 year old. But Luke and Chun Li just keep on thinking he's a kid. So they kind of treat him like he's their adopted son. But he's actually older than Luke. 